welcome again to Hangout the Cafe, um, the place where we have real conversations and sometimes deep conversations. But um, I believe they're conversations that will change, that will impact and encourage all of us. And that's why we're here today. So, Detola and Moranike, can you tell us? I know you have your friends here online, but for those who don't know you, Yes, thank you, Joy. Hangout Cafe is a safe space. Yes, it's a safe space. And um, yes, so tell us a little bit about you, what you do. Um, yeah, who wants to go first? Okay, Marenica, I want to let Marenica, Marenica go first. <laughs> okay, um, little bit about me. My name is Marenica. Hello, everybody. I'm married with two young adult children. Um, what do I do? I guess... The things that are important to me are relationships. I'm passionate about um, people having strong relationships, whether that's a marriage relationship, whether that's a parenting relationship. Right. For work, I currently work as an administrator with a church. Right. And um, yeah, I think yeah. that's it really. That's it, okay, thank you. Ditola. So yeah, I'm Desola Phillips. I've been married for 30 years this year um, and I've got two young adult children as well. I, um, I work in the NHS in management. Um, used to be clinical, but very, very non-clinical now. I haven't touched the patient in years. And outside work, uh, life generally, I think like Moreni can, that's probably one of the things that, you know, brought us together. I am passionate about marriage, particularly relationships um, being what they were meant to be. Um, I am in the marriage ministry at my local church, Jesus House, um, and also relationships to do with children, particularly as they become teenagers <laughs> and young adults. Um, yeah, so that that's me in a nutshell. I'm very passionate about marriage. I'm very, but I think more and more as year as the year as years has gone by, I've it's a lot more about being focused on who I am and how I show up in my marriage more than anything. Right. And that's why you run um, a ministry called Yes, tell why us about I, that. I run a ministry called I call it a group. But anyway, ministry called Wives with Wisdom. Mm -hmm. And it started out as um well, we called it part of the praying wife. Morenike has been one of the well from the right from the beginning and again, because even before we started the group, um, we used to bounce off each other on marriage and this wife whole thing. Um, so it was natural that we start we, we were that group together run for many years um i'm trying to put a number to the years but probably about 20 years now correct Marenike? yeah yeah so about 20 years yeah. Yeah. that's actually freaky wow <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow okay yes yes 20 years yeah. just growing and learning and growing and learning really yeah okay so um over the okay let me tell thank you for sharing that both of you um, I'm part of this group, Wives with Wisdom, and over the last, how many months now? We started in January. January, since January. Um, they've been running this series called, well, they started with, what's it like to be married with me? And it, they've broken into different um, topics. Yeah. Uh, the last one, that we, which was last month, was, <laughs> what's it like to make love to me? Part you one. Can, sorry? Part one. Part, part one. one. Part There's one. Two which parts. was it was an interesting topic. <laughs> it was an interesting topic. Anyway, it was after that one, and I just thought, you know, this series that we've been doing, um, it'd be nice for us to talk about it at Hangout Cafe. So I reached out to Daytona. Uh, I said, "Would you and Marenike, um, and whoever else wants to come on, um, come on Hangout Cafe to talk about what it's like to be married to me." And they both graciously agreed to come on. And you know why I love this topic? It's because, you know, a lot of times we are thinking about, especially when there are challenges in the marriage, 
we're always thinking about changing the other person but not looking inward you know so that's why i i, I actually love um, the series that you guys have been doing it's been really really good so today we're talking about what is it like to be married to me one question that came that i was thinking of this morning i don't know if your husbands are on are they are they joined the light or they're listening My they haven't <laughs> husband is totally non-social media he prayed for me this morning and sent me forth <laughs> so no but i'm sure he'll watch the replay on youtube because I'll, I'll i'll send it to him yeah. he's not online yeah no. okay <laughs> Because I was going to say that if we asked your husbands, would they say you're great wives? Would they say they're, you know, oh, my wife is wonderful, she's this or that? Just, just, I just thought about that. That would be interesting if the husbands go, but since they're not uh, online, it's fine. But it'd be a good question to ask. So maybe when I see them, I'll ask them. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think Pastor Funke, it's interesting you say that because when this, um, the flyers and everything went out, I got yes. a few questions around, mm, should we not be asking Olu this? Olu is my husband, by the way, Olu Phillips. Yes. Should we not be asking Olu this question? And you could see the immediate reaction is, well, it's your husband that should be telling you what it's like to be married to you. But it's really, so when next, it's really about us thinking about ourselves, putting up a yeah. mirror and yeah. looking at ourselves yeah. and thinking, how do I show up? Who am I in this mind? How does my... Can I get behind my husband's eyes yeah. and see what he sees yeah. truly, honestly? So when next you see Bumi and Olu, you should ask them, what is it like to be married to them? <laughs> oh, God, indeed. Tineke said I should ask privately. Ask privately. <laughs> I was, you know, um, this um, topic, you got it from a book. There's a book that you guys follow. Yes. And it's the yes. same, what's it like to be married to me? Yes. So I went on to um, the reviews, some reviews about the book. And this was what somebody said about the book. She said, would I really like me if I was my husband? Mm -hmm. Then she said, no, I wouldn't like me at all. Mm -hmm. It's time to change and not think, and not just think about me. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth. A lot of times we're thinking about ourselves, not thinking about what mm -hmm. the person sees um, daily, how we show up, like you said. But okay, so. Um, Moran, can you be married for how long? 32 years this year. And Detola, sorry, I, I know you said it, but yeah, one year, one year difference. So I'm one year behind Moran. Oh. Um, okay. we were, yeah, we were 30 years in December last year, right? So you've been married for a long time, a long time. Um, I'm 30, 32, going on to 33, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, so question and folks if you guys have questions for them please 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 put it in the question box um they said they will answer any question any question any I've question, gone, any question. <laughs> <laughs> over the last years um since you've been married have you evolved as a spouse since you first got married how do you think you've evolved hmm. yeah um, okay more yeah you go okay. Um, so how have I evolved? I think as as I've as I've matured as as a person, as a Christian, yeah. and understood better what God's perspective is on marriage. I think it's it's changed my approach and my attitude, not just towards my husband, but towards my relationship as a whole. Yeah. Because I guess, you know, when you're young, it's like, oh, we've fallen in love and we want to spend the rest of our lives together. Yeah. And you don't understand at that point of the journey, or at least yeah. I didn't, that all of that was just emotion. Mm -hmm. And that real love is actually a choice. It's a decision. Yeah. And it's a decision that you have to make every single day. Yeah. And so I guess it's, it's, if I was looking at Maureen Kerr, who got married age 24, she had a totally different perspective and approach. But now, X number of years later, <laughs> I think it's just, it's interesting to see when you hear things like, oh, you've matured like a fine wine and so on and so forth. 
it's interesting that the things that probably would have riled me years before yes. don't anymore mm -hmm. because my perspective is life is actually too short and too precious to spend time fighting arguing mm -hmm. then dealing with all the post emotion of the argument and yeah. i have time for yeah. that i don't have time for that so as much as possible will things work me yes but as much as possible we just try and talk about them get through them and move on to the next thing so i think that's how i've evolved just in terms of my approach my attitude my mindset just and also the, the the perspective i have on it because i genuinely enjoy being married to my husband thank god i'm grateful <laughs> So, Thank God. <laughs> so I think that obviously that helps as well. But yeah, it's just it's a journey and we don't have all the information at the start. But yeah. as each year goes by, by God's grace, we acquire more information and we try and make it as beautiful as Thank possible. You. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Ditola, I don't want yeah. to answer that question, but I know that you probably you've evolved over the years. But the follow up question I'll ask is, what are some of the surprising things you've learned about yourself over the last few years since you've been married to Oli? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, surprising things I've learned about myself. Mm. When I, well, just thinking about that question and, you know, linking it back to the first question. So, I mean, I, I, I used to describe myself as shy, introverted, and romantic. Mm -hmm. I'll describe myself now as not that shy, quite outgoing and romantic. So, okay. <laughs> um, I, I one big surprise for me yeah. quite early on in marriage was realizing that I I got angry. I really got angry, um, and I didn't know how to, to forgive. I, I could harbor resentment. Now I say that I discovered it when I got married because prior to getting married, I, mean, I had really close friends, I had roommates who got on my nerves, but I never got into a fight. I never really fell out with people like that. Okay. Um, I never got into arguments with people. So I used to think I was a really nice person. Who nice person, get, yeah. <laughs> angry, who was really nice to people. And then I got married and then i realized that the things that i was on annoyed about yeah. and i could just hold it in okay. and i could go on and on just being angry and i found i realized i actually found it difficult to forgive um mm -hmm. so that, that was my the first major shock for me i realized that okay tola you have <laughs> one big flaw here you need help <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> you know that's true yeah, marriage i mean like somebody just put that a husband and wife tend to bring out the worst in each other you know they, what you think I, I always say i'm patient i'm a very quiet person and very but now i found out that i'm not i'm not i'm trying to ask my husband he'll probably say no she's not <laughs> but um when I can, let, me, let me ask you that too actually mm -hmm. um what were the surprising things you discovered about yourself i think for me it was i, I mean somebody put in the peace nation because okay. i am generally quite quite peaceful quite peace loving i don't like noise so when people are shouting i don't i can't raising my voice and all of that but similarly I found that there were some occasions when it would just be like, and I'll be like, where did that come from? So it's like, whatever it was had gotten under my skin so much that there was just a reaction that came forth. Yeah. And the other thing I think for me was I'm generally, I, I like to, I don't like stuff harboring. I don't like stuff kind of being left to fester. Yeah. But similarly, with Tola, even though I wasn't not forgiving, I, because I, I I do a lot of processing internally, and so you just kind of find yourself revisiting, <laughs> yeah, whatever it is. And then when you do that, it starts to build a picture. And then when something happens, it's like, 
yeah, I knew that was going to happen because of this, 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 this. So <laughs> just trying to kill that in the narrative and say, actually, no, that's not yeah. healthy. And it took a while because I didn't actually realize I was doing it until I saw it playing out. Um, so, yeah, those are things I think I discovered I can be quite feisty when I need to be. Um, nobody else would believe that other than Bumi, but yes, I can be <laughs> feisty when I need to be. I believe that. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to add something very, very quickly, yes. um, Pastor Funke, just, just something that also occurred to me. And this is something I actually learned from my husband. Because one thing I also realized that I actually found it quite difficult to say I was sorry. For some reason, I didn't think I was the one doing anything wrong. Wrong. So, mm -hmm. um, one day my husband said, do you think, I mean, because I was the only one always correcting and, you know, whatever, and he hardly corrected in that sense. He would overlook things. One day he said, do you think you do anything wrong? And I actually <laughs> tried that. To... <laughs> but you know what? I learned, I learned how to say sorry from him because he was so, he was always so quick to say sorry. And like, he is from Peace Nation, they're from both of them, they're from the same country. So anything for the sake of peace, he will just say sorry. Um, and I learned that from him over time, that actually um, it, t it takes a lot to own things mm. and to just to be humble enough to say, do you know what? I was wrong and I'm sorry. Oh, that's good. That's you know, I, I always think that when people get into marriage, um, we usually just think, like I think Marianne can say that, Everything will be hunky dory, everything will be fine. But then when things now start to go south, I think that's what they say. Um, you forget that even with your siblings that you grew up with, you guys quarrel. Yes. You quarrel, you fight that. So when I mean imagine this man that you've now married, or this woman that you've now married, that you just met me some people maybe two years ago or three years ago before entering the marriage, then you think everything will be fine. Nah. You're living in very close quarters. Exactly. You expect not to have any friction. It's unrealistic. It's unrealistic. It, it's so that think, notion where, like I said, that I've, I've, I'm just a romantic. And I think I'm still a you romantic. Read but of, I think, did you read lots uh, of Mills and Booms? Oh, you? yeah. I, I was lost <laughs> in the world of Mills and Booms, waiting for this dark, tall, dark, dashing man to come and whisk me away to <laughs> happily ever after. Horse. Yes. Um, <laughs> but you know, I, I am still a romantic, but I think it's just changed in the sense that before getting married or thinking about marriage, I just thought the romance and the love will see us through. Mm -hmm. When love... So so it's it's very different with my siblings when, yes we fought but it wasn't romantic love i just thought romantic love would deal with everything mm -hmm. and the shock and horror when like you said pastor from Kevin starts to go south <laughs> and it's not even big things it doesn't it's not big things the little little niggles that you think you're not satisfied yeah. i mean i don't know whether we think that our husbands will come We'll get married and they'll just adapt to our, our world, our, yeah. our way of thinking. I don't know what it is, but yeah. Or maybe because where the homemakers is mm -hmm. generally something to do with the home and environment, whatever, at least for me, that you start to think that actually um <laughs> it, it's not all romance. And what Marenka was saying earlier about the love is actually then waking up and I mean not like my husband at this point in time, but I choose to love. And I choose yeah. to act and do everything yeah. that portrays that love, mm -hmm. regardless of how I'm feeling, yeah. you know. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked about how we're changing and um, all that, but how do you balance being true to yourself whilst adapting to the needs of your husband? How do you balance that? Because mm. you also don't want to change completely from who Morenike is or Ditola is. So how do you balance that? Yeah. Um, I'll say, I mean, this will probably just come as I speak. So I think for me, looking back over the last 32 years since I've known Olu, where initially, and many years ago, we didn't have premarital counseling. We didn't have all of that. Yeah. We, were, we were carried along by this romantic love. And the idea and the belief that God brought us together. Yeah. So that was my experience. So 
there was a lot of not, I would say, um, the authenticity that I brought into my marriage earlier on is very different to what it is now. Earlier on, there was a, there was an, a sense of behaving myself, actively, consciously thinking that I've got to behave myself. I've got to, you know, you put your best foot forward. Yeah. But that's going to carry you for, for so long. And your, yourself and those things that, um, like I said, the resentment, harboring things and all of that start coming out. And, you know, you start realizing who you are. So when you say how you be true to yourself, be true to yourself is also recognizing, while they, these are all my good faiths and good points and my good qualities, yeah. there are also this stuff that I need to deal with, that I need to recognize yeah. that it's not my husband that's going to sort this out for me. Um, and because I'm a Christian, all of this is, I mean, for me, we talk about this marriage thing being an institution that God uses to mature us as Christians. Okay. You start to realize that, yeah, I, I say I'm a Christian and I'm out there in the world and I'm living like this good Christian woman and everybody looks at us, oh, she's so prayerful or she saw this or she said she's in the choir. I was in the choir for a long time and all of these things. But when you're in your home with your <laughs> husband <laughs> and the real person comes out, that's who you are. And so, so balance yourself. You know, that marriage, my relationship with my husband actually has helped me to come out and be myself and recognize myself and recognize where I need to be corrected. It's mm. primarily by God, but God is using him. So I guess to me, the question is not how do I balance it? Okay. It feels like it actually works together if I let it. If my attitude is going to be that, that, okay, um, I'm, I'm learning. And this has come over time. I kid you not. Yet, you know, earlier on, I, I wouldn't have spoken like this. But yeah, I see it not as a balancing opposing things that are in conflict, but actually things that work together and en enhance my being my authentic self. If I can be my authentic self with my husband and recognize where I need to um, grow, what I need to work on, then that is really who I am rather than what I, the faces and the masks that I put on outside. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, the one thing I'll, okay. I'll add to that, I'm just thinking about it, there's a picture that was going through my head and it's the whole thing around, say for example, you're having an argument or you're interacting, this could be with your husband or wife or with your children, and then the doorbell rings and there's somebody at the door. There's let's not even say there's Jesus or God at the door. There's your friend at the door. Yeah. All of a sudden, all of how you are manifesting to them <laughs> will change. And there's there's a lot of effort and energy that goes into maintaining these different roles and facades mm. and all the rest of it. And actually over time it begins to eat away at the essence of who you yeah. are. So for me, it's about being integral. It's about being whole. It's about this is who I am inside. This is how I am outside. I'm generally the same as much as possible. There are obviously a few things that, yeah, ain't nobody seen that side of me apart from my family. Yeah. But on the whole, as much as possible, if we're presenting in the same way, and it, it always has to come from that background, especially for us, we're not on this journey by ourselves. Mm -hmm. God is, for me, as though as God is the mediator and the upholder of the covenant that we entered into yeah. on the day that we got married. Yeah. And yeah. he's the one who enables us to stand by the terms of that covenant. So as much as possible, it's going on that journey, like Tola said, and saying, okay, what do I need to work on? And if we're submitted to the Holy Spirit, when we're quiet, you, you will hear him say, you shouldn't have said that. Yeah or you shouldn't have done that, or you need to go and say you're sorry, or you need to go and do other stuff that maybe we'll talk about later. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Someone just put, um, not me, I can't hide my feelings. So meaning that if they're quarreling and somebody comes in, they're going to, still going to. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's interesting. I, there was something that I witnessed. So a couple, um, 
they had quarreled at home. And I knew because that uh, one of them had called my husband to say this was, and it was a bad quarrel. Um, and, but I think he said, come to church. Um, I think it was one of these days where we're having a program that afterwards I'll see you. Now, because I knew what had happened, I was coming, um, for those who attend that church, um, there's, if you're upstairs in the office and you're coming down, you can see the car park, mm. right? Okay, so I saw them when they drove in, you know, you, you can tell, they usually say you can tell when a couple are married, sometimes they're not talking to each other. The, the wife is facing <laughs> this way. I mean, so I, they came in, I saw them. But by the time they walked into church, they were holding each other's hands. And I was like, you guys are calling so who are you pretending for so that people will think oh everything is fine but we do we do that sometimes but um we do we do that but i guess okay uh <laughs> actually first forget sorry one just something that's just crossed my mind again yeah. on that and this i guess because i think for me as much as possible one of the things that i know we would love to have is for people to have takeaways from yes. this session yeah. as well. So in the case of that couple who had that um, fight, that disagreement, yeah. it just I just had a flashback. So Bumi and I were in the same situation. It was POG a few years ago. We had a raging argument in the car and it continued in the car park at church. I can't even remember what it was about now. Yeah. But we would have this thing, we've had it for years that First of all, in terms of when we have disagreements, we talk about them, we understand what the issue is, and then we move on. And depending on the time, we try as much as possible. The whole thing about don't let the sun go down on your anger yeah. um, is something that we try and live by as well. So we had that, and we had that, and we were coming in for like a session where we were going to be praying, and we were like, we can't go into church this way. Mm. We absolutely have to have a conversation, talk it through, even if we agree to park it and come back to it later. Yeah, yeah. And so we did that. We had that conversation. Like I said, I can't even remember what it was about now. But we had that quick conversation in the car and we agreed that, okay, fine. This is your perspective. This is my perspective. We'll continue this afterwards. Yeah. And we actually were able to go in. I don't think we were holding hands, but we did go in side by side, shoulder to shoulder, and we went and did what we needed to do. So one thing I will say is as much as possible, even when we're having disagreements and arguments, try and talk about it. Don't let it grow, don't let it fester. Yeah. And yeah. Your, your husband or your wife is not your opponent. No. You're a team, yeah. you're working together. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, by turning your backs towards each other, and just in terms of just when you you're fighting, yeah, it, it does actually causes more of a gap. Mm -hmm. And the quicker we close that gap, the stronger our union will be. And that's yeah. just what I wanted yeah. to say. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. Um, someone said that could actually be what happened with that couple. Maybe they talked about it and met up before they came into church. Um, yeah, that's good. Okay, so let's talk about times when you felt disconnected from your husband or your spouses. How did you handle that? Um, let me have a go at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, obviously, in 30 years, there's been many times when we disagreed. And uh, I, I just want to use... Um, and you know because what disagree it's not just you know there are times i don't know maybe maybe i'm the only one that is not holy as this there are times when like did I, why did i even marry this man you know no, 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 I'm, I'm coming to that first <laughs> okay because I was, I, I was going to say you know there are times when we disagree and it's yeah. little disagreement yeah but there are times when it's what i call prody conflict okay. there is something going on and i am speaking from experience so there is something going on that potentially could it's been known to destroy marriages yeah. let's put it that way yeah um how, how do you handle waking up in and it's it's similar to what we've talked about earlier you have a big fight and all of that how do you come back together and i think there's a sense of just following on from what marenica said earlier that okay we made some decisions and some commitments at the beginning of this marriage yeah. um, 
and we decide individually because we made those commitments before god we're both yes. christians to the, to the glory of god by the grace of god and we want to honor god in this relationship but our flesh comes in at we're human yeah. and i will say there are times i don't know about my husband but there are times when i don't like him i don't i do not like yeah. what i what to me he's doing i don't like his whatever reaction action whatever it is but what choices am i making in continuing to relate to him or show up mm -hmm. and i think for me the turning point one of the turning points i've had so many pastor i'll go with here about goes to watch this a change in my life or you know honestly um I think it was during it was one of those sessions we had as part of the prayer wife group okay. where we actually looked at the wedding vows at our marriage vows and we analyzed it we studied it we took it apart one word at a time mm. to understand what it actually meant first thing we realized that all of us most of us if not all of us had said our wedding vows on the day of our wedding didn't really think too much into what we were saying and we practiced yeah. it. No, we, we hadn't looked at it again. Yeah. So when we were looking at it again and actually studying it, I remember leaving that session. We, we met in Jesus' house in one of the rooms, feeling quite like, oh, oh my God, what did, and this is like 10 years after I got married, <laughs> what did I let myself into? And when I said 10 years after I got married, I hadn't actually had any major conflicts. Nothing had happened, but I got a sense of, oh my God, this actually is for better for worse. Mm. And I would say that I thank God for that day. I thank God for that question. Because when later there was a huge conflict, I remembered some of those mm. things. So I think for me in those times is thinking back to what, what did I commit to? Yeah. Who did I commit to? I love did I commit to him or did I commit to God? Yeah. Who, who did I make my vows before? Was it for him or was it for God? And I think in a sense, I mean, really, all of this stems from you and God. What's my relationship with God? Yeah. Who do I want to please? I always say one thing, and I keep reminding myself, and I learned it through the power of the prayer wife small group, where I say, one day, when I came into, I mean, when I came into this world, I came by myself. Yeah. <laughs> I did not come with my husband. <laughs> I was not married. When I die and it's time for me to go back home, I'm going to go by myself. Yeah. I'm not going to go, go by my, with my husband. No. Now when I stand before God, he's going to say, okay, I called you to be a wife, a daughter, everything that God has called me to do in this earth. Yeah. How am I going to answer? Am I, am I going to say, as far as the wife thing is concerned, am I going to say, oh yeah, I did didn't do what you asked me to do, God, because he didn't do this or because he did that and all of that. And that for me was my, I guess, Rema, my my light bulb moment that, wow, I, I committed for life in this thing and this is life. So when we are in chronic conflicts, it is still life. Yep. And you, I make the decision um, in that moment Thank God you remember things, you remember what God told you, remember what God promised you. But you also remember that I I, I need I, there's somebody I'm answering to. Yeah. 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 Particularly my husband, bless him. One day we had like one of those arguments about this issue. Yeah. I kid you not, know, we argued for eight hours that day. We were <laughs> we were dressed, ready to go to work. Well, the working day, we were both dressed, ready to go to work in the morning, and the conversation started, and we were there at 4.30 in the evening, from about 8.30 in the morning. But well, you didn't go to work. We didn't go to work. We had to <laughs> call it to work. We had to both call it to work. After about three hours, when we knew that, okay, you're not going anywhere, we had to call it to work to say, okay, we're not coming in. Okay. And this thing went on and on and on and on and on. And after such it, we didn't eat, we didn't drink, we stopped maybe to use the bathroom and carried on. So obviously you get to the point, and, and I say thank God for my husband because in those moments when he comes up with something like what he said, which I will share, then I, I, I am grateful to God um, 
for him. He said, and this is where you, you know that men are different from women. We are created by, by design to be different. Mm, yeah. And they also say that men think in boxes mm. and they can separate things and everything has a different compartments and things don't touch to each other. Whereas we women, our brain is like, like wires, everything interlinks, everything works. So this conflict issue for me was affecting our whole marriage. Okay. It was affecting everything else, you know, whereas for him, so after, anyway, to cut a long story short, after going out for nearly 10 hours, um, he said, why don't, you, why don't we take this issue yeah. and put this in a box? Okay. And the box has a lead. Okay. When we want to talk about it, we bring it out, we know that we're going to talk about it for this period of time, and we put it back in the box and show the lead. So that our lives as a married couple, as parents, as anything else we're doing in ministry, in the church, in the work, will not be impacted negatively. And then we prayed. We didn't resolve that issue. If When I say chronic conflict, it was a conflict that went on over a period of time. So the sun went down. We went to bed without resolving things. But I think for us, we've learned that the sun going down on, or not letting the sun go down on your anger is really more about your heart attitude yeah. to God yeah. yes. and with God, yeah. not about yeah. by force we're going to resolve this conflict yeah. tonight. Mm. Otherwise, we won't sleep. Yeah. And I think that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to resolve it. But yeah. we had to, we had to in prayer, and then we, we, we both knelt down and just prayed to God that, look, God, this is our heart. We don't agree with each other, but you know the truth and you can work on each of our hearts. Mm. And I think for me, it's, it's, it's helped me to start switching my brain a bit more to how men think. Okay. <laughs> and put things in perspective compartments a bit more. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you. We had eight, eight hours. You guys would have stayed up all night. <laughs> I keep it for you didn't come up wow. with that. <laughs> but I love the bit that you talked about the vows, yes. you know, going back to the vows and taking each, I love, I actually love that. I think we should all do that as often as possible because it mm. really would help us. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. Monica, anything you want to add to that? Uh, um, no, I think it's just, there's just the observation around when you do have these things, just remembering that God is there, God is present. And as much as possible, if we're able to bring these issues and bring bring ourselves the way we are, the way we feel. Mm -hmm. it, I read something that the place of prayer that is shared between a husband and wife is actually one of the most vulnerable places. Mm -hmm. When you feel that, well, when you can trust the other person yeah. enough yeah. to open up yourself the same way that you would pray to God when it was just the two of you. Yeah. But now there's three of you there, and there's 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 a there's a very there's a very deep connection yeah. that's built in that place of prayer, and I think it's also a place that facilitates healing. Yeah. Because I saw somebody comment, I think it was Joy, about does it not depend on what the issue is? And I actually don't think it depends on what the issue is. And this book that we are going through, what is it like to be married to me? Yeah. There are some of the issues that are stated in that book yeah. that I remember one of them, I went to my husband and said, this is, this is, this happened. What would you do? And he was like, ah, there's no way, blah, blah, blah. It can't happen. And the woman in question took the, the whole issue to God and in conjunction with her husband over a period of time, they've gone through a whole process of healing and restoration. Mm -hmm. So as long as we're able to bring ourselves, our marriages, our issues, our relationships to God, if we actually believe when we say that all things are possible yeah. with him and there's nothing yeah. that is impossible yeah. for him to do, yeah. then he will do what he can do. But I think it's when we close certain things off and say, well, okay, I can give you that, but I can't give you this. That's mm -hmm. when we have mm -hmm. that sort of thing. You know, talking about the issues, I know that some people say that so, for example, where there's infidelity in a marriage, that that's a deal breaker. That's it. It's they're not going to stay in that marriage. Mm. But I've no, I know people that have 
where there's been infidelity and they've stayed and their marriage is stronger than it was before yeah. so i guess it's again going to god you know with all these issues mm. i don't think any um, like monica just said i don't think it should depend on any on the issue rather yeah mm. it depends on more of your heart I've just seen Joy's comment as well, though, because she's saying about abuse, and I will oh, say, abuse. Okay. there's yes, abuse, yes, yes, there's yes, abuse, yes, and yes, obviously the yes. person has to be removed from that situation yes. Yes. and not left in the place of harm. So, Joy, I'm yes. not saying if that's the case, remain there. However, I am saying that I have also still seen restoration and healing happen yeah. in these circumstances, but I'm not saying for the person who is being abused to remain there no, and continue no. to be subjected yeah. to the abuse. So I hope that makes sense. Yeah. When yes. there's abuse, yes, I agree 100%. So please, when there's abuse, remove yourself from that situation. Yeah. Um, that's so important. Yeah. But then saying that, I know also a, a couple who there was abuse in the, in the marriage. But when it, we eventually spoke to the husband, it was lack of ignorance. Let me tell you what happened. So it was the grandfather abused the mom. The father abused his mom. And he just grew up thinking that when the woman does something that you don't like, you just slap her. You know, until we had a series of conversations with him to say to him, no, that is not normal. Because for him, it was normal. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that, that's why, um, thankfully, um, going having things like premarital um, counseling helps. Um, some of us, by the grace of God, go wide. We didn't have premarital counseling, but God was grace, gracious towards us and merciful. Yeah. Uh, and I think, um, yeah, a, a lot of the times, I, I, in Christian dumb for example particularly because we so much think well prayer changes everything and that idea that you know if you're experiencing that sort of abuse or whatever um just pray that's not what we advocate and you know it's probably a conversation for another day but there's also an element of setting boundaries in your yeah. marriage yeah but you, set, you set boundaries from understanding who you yeah. are understand your own value understanding yeah. what is acceptable to you under god with you know not not as a just as a person on your own mm -hmm. that you set those boundaries to keep you safe yeah. to keep your marriage safe to keep both of you safe so absolutely distance yourself <laughs> pray for the distance if you are in danger but you know don't stay i mean don't take abuse yeah. in any form you know, it's interesting that um, what you just said about boundaries. I don't even, you know, there's so many things I wish that um, we talk about before we actually get married, yeah. but we don't. You know, we yeah. should talk about. I mean, I, Kem is here. Um, and you guys, you're part of the. I, I, well, yeah. So like, is actually we're, 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 both, we're both part of Titans Ministry. Yeah. Our, oh, our husband yeah, but, okay. I wasn't yeah. sure about it. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm a marriage mentor. Okay. Okay. You know, those are some of the things we need to talk about I mean, even if, i mean the young people are not here a lot of them are probably not on this platform but as parents we should encourage them to go for marriage yeah. counseling or pre-marriage pre-marriage yeah. counseling marriage counseling whilst you're in the marriage you know, talk yeah. about boundaries yeah. Yeah, talk Sam about is, Sam is re um, recommending some books in the chat as well. okay yeah. yeah boundaries in marriage is also good yeah boundaries in marriage um yeah because even things i mean something i think it was even kemi that mentioned this a long time ago about um couples who um what do they call it swing yeah yes. yeah and i'm like what and you know you just go along with it because either your wife or your husband wants it but there should be boundaries you, you have yeah. to be able to say ah, 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 no 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 i didn't sign up for this i'm not going to go swinging with you <laughs> Whatever it is. Anybody that doesn't know what that means, please ask Kemi or Morena <laughs> Cat. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um, what is it? Churches don't do pre marriage classes for singles. Hmm, okay. okay, that's an interesting, that's an interesting perspective. One. Yeah. So almost like a preparatory class. Yeah, I think, um, what's it called? HT, is it HTB? Yes. I think they do um, pre-marriage, uh, pre I can't remember what it's called now. I think they do. Okay. I think they do. Kemi can confirm. 
um, but yeah, maybe it's something that churches should start to do for um, those who are for singles to uh, prepare themselves. Yeah, even uh, for only for yeah, in our church to premarital so counseling. We are planning, yeah, we are planning things for singles um, okay. in tight knots. Uh, I just seen Kenny's post. Um, yeah, it, 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 there's certainly a gap there, and just just taking it to the other end. Yeah, there's also which you know I'm also quite passionate about. Obviously, I'm in that end, but you get to the other end. You've been married thirty years, thirty five years, forty Senior years, and, and, <laughs> and you know there's some things that are assumed. Yeah. There's some things that I've never talked yeah. about. Yeah. There's some things that happen, there are changes that happen that you think, oh my God, we're the only ones going through this. Everybody else is having fun. And until you start talking to other people, I mean, obviously to people who share the same values as you, who, you know, understand, you know, you know, understand what marriage is about. Yeah. Then you start to realize that actually there's, there's a bit of a gap there as well. And a lot of us, a lot of people suffer in silence yeah. Um, yeah. and don't want to, especially, especially the, the guys. I think yeah. girl, it's women, easier are, for girls more, to women are more inclined to talk, but I find it interesting that there are so many topics that as a church, not just our church specifically, but we don't talk about. Yeah. So we come to church and we, we receive the word, we interact with people and then we go off and then we go and encounter life. And I would love a situation where we are doing life in church. How, where people are able to come into places with other people. We all understand that we love God. We are led by him. But we're able to have open and honest conversations where we can share our experiences and grow and learn from others as well. Because when things are happening in silence or in silos or behind closed doors, like Ditella said, you're assuming you're the only person who's going through that experience, mm -hmm. but, and it causes isolation. But a lot of the time, if you are to get together with people, you're like, oh, you're going through that, or you're going through that, or you're... so I'm actually not strange after yeah. all. Yeah. And also we don't really have a culture of sharing. Mm -hmm. It's like, don't tell people what's going yeah. on, just keep yeah. it to yourself. Yeah. Whereas yeah. your sharing could help so many other people Absolutely. who are going through the yeah. same thing. So I think, yeah, we just need a mindset shift. We do. We actually do. Um, yeah, we do. Um, there's a question. So I don't miss it. There are lots of um, things I want to go back to. But someone just asked, but isn't infidelity a type of abuse, especially if it is repetitive and the other party shows no remorse? Question. Hmm. Is it the type of abuse? I haven't actually considered it from that perspective. I mean, there is there is there is the concept of a person who, who is continuing to do the same thing with either no remorse or no change in action. Yeah. Then there is definitely something that needs to be done. Yeah. Because then there's a cycle that keeps repeating itself. There's a pattern yeah, yeah. that keeps repeating itself. Yeah. And that person needs yeah. help yeah. in whatever way, shape or form, whether that's through counseling, but there does need to be something there. So I definitely, but I, I never actually thought about it from that perspective before. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it presented in that way. So I guess, I guess in a way, maybe it sort of is, but it's just, if that's the situation that's happening and it's going, and it could be anything. It, it could be infidelity, it could be uh, gambling, yeah. it could be pornography, yeah. Yeah. it could yeah. be anything. Yeah. It, yeah. There are so many, there are so many vices, yeah. for want of a better word, that, and it's all, and it's all connected to the flesh and lusts of yeah. different sorts. So if that's happening time and time again, yeah. then get help. Yeah. It's not something to be sat in and just, taken or absorbed because you're a wife or a husband or you're a Christian, the person obviously needs help. Yeah. Yeah. And I would encourage 
yes yeah. somebody said it's an abuse of trust yeah. so yes i yeah. guess that there's definitely help that's required yeah yeah and kemi said it if it has a psychological and emotional impact it can be abused and you see when we talk about infidelity it is not sometimes it's a one-up but when yeah. it's a repetitive thing you know you repent or she'll repent and then you go back to it then there's a problem mm. somewhere you know that even just praying is not going to solve you have you need help yeah because it might be um a psychological yeah. thing yeah i can't yeah. just said we need to know we have worth in god whether we're married or not absolutely oh, absolutely yeah. Yeah. i mean not advocating divorce or anything um or, or or anything like that i think just just thinking i was i was thinking about the fact that is it abuse i mean it's certainly abuse self-abuse yeah. um you know pornography adultery infidelity, whatever it is the first person you're abusing is yourself mm. you know um and obviously it impacts on your close the, the people around you your spouse your children even your children are getting you're going to suffer negatively from that whether it's obvious or not mm. um, and i think for me like very i've never thought of, of it as an abuse towards the other perhaps but i think there's also an element of thinking about this thing so we've talked about these vices and there's some vices that we as human we've put as big vices yeah. there's yes huge pornography yeah. oh my yeah. god adultery oh wow yeah but what about the other little little vices that are cyclical that are repeated yeah that you know lying lying yeah that's what came to my mind <laughs> that you do all the time and we we do, we we've decided that some things are bigger and some mm -hmm. things are smaller and, so, mm -hmm. and i think for me just thinking about if i've i'm together with my spouse for a reason and like i said i believe strongly that marriage is meant to grow us and mature us more into christ and that, that means there are areas that we need growth in yeah for whatever reason maybe family pattern it may be a curse whatever if you want to go spiritual about it but for whatever reason i am in my husband's life for a reason mm -hmm. and he is in my life for a reason and more often than not i probably he will be the only person or he will probably be the only person that will see those things in me that nobody else mm -hmm. will see not mm -hmm. even my mother yeah that's yeah god has put in my life so i think there's also an element of okay this is happening and it's impacting on me but yes. sometimes as long as you're safe and i'm being very careful what i say here because i'm not advocating just suffering as long as you're safe and you are able to and it comes from also you you know knowing yourself and recognizing who you are in god mm -hmm. that my husband doesn't make me he's not the giver of my joy he's not my god um but god has put something in me that he needs yeah. so whether it is even as simple as i'm the one that's going to go and call for help yeah you know rather than often you find that one person is doing something both of you know it and you want to hush hush about it because he has said don't tell anybody but actually it's like you've got fire at home if you're if you have fire at home and your spouse is saying don't tell are you going to keep quiet and burn no you're going to scream and shout and well, get you know, help it's it's shame because i know some of it, it's shame because they feel mm. oh but how are people going what are people going to say if they find out that this is happening in a marriage you know so that's why they don't seek help yeah yeah it's shame is 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 ignorance is understanding and a lot of these things is is societal norms and what we consider particularly our culture yeah. because even, some cultures even, find even, it easy um, christian expectations exactly so I, 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 a lot of it some cultures don't have any problems with going to tell people about things like pornography yeah. or you find that in our and i'm using that as an example some cultures find it easier than others to say do you know what we're going through this we we both of us will go for cancer yeah. in our yeah. culture i mean we're getting there but i remember 10 50 years ago cancer link huh me no <laughs> I'm not <really> <laughs> yeah. you know but you know who doesn't who you know you don't like i said i use the, the analogy of fire again if there's fire in the house and i recognize it comes with knowledge and understanding 
to know that this thing is going to burn both yeah. of us yeah yeah, yeah. shame comes out of it if there's fire in the house and i'm naked and i need to save myself i'll run out <laughs> do you see what i mean so i think and i think it's the enemy the enemy has come to steal kill and destroy and he uses is ignorance he uses isolation yeah. he, he uses that idea that ah shh, do not tell anybody mm. while he's stoking the fire underneath yeah. until so i think you know, every, people, a lot of people we're all going through challenges we all yeah. have challenges i have to tell That's you this I, I came across this <laughs> this is why some people don't talk so this yeah. couple they apparently had been cohabiting for two years and they realized that it was wrong they gave their lives you saw that like and then they went to see mommy Gio. I mean, as not um, Pastor <laughs> Nibes, but as in, you know, the mother of the church. Yes. They called mommy Gio. So they went to see their um, pastor's wife. And she was like, two years? You guys, they said, but man, we've repented. And um, we want to get married. She said, first of all, I'm putting that marriage on hold. I'm going to put people on 21 days fast. And um, blah, blah. She just kept going on and on. And they were so upset. So they went away, went to see a friend. Um, the lady went to see a friend. And she said, why don't you go to daddy Gio? and find out what daddy Gio would say so they went to see the daddy Gio, and then Gio was like oh god saved you guys only after two years we, we were in it for 12 years so he and mommy Gio had been coming <laughs> and he dealt with what was said i was in the choir i was doing this i was doing that i was playing play instruments then he now called mommy Gio. He's like, come and hear these people come and hear that their own is better thank god they were saved after two years so the mommy Gio was upset she was like why would you is it everything that you tell you me she was so holier than thou and I, that that skit actually was it, it 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 struck a chord because when they said we prayed and we've been forgiven and she said oh just, just like that it's like that, yes that's just yes. how you become just born like again that. and it's just like wow <laughs> <laughs> but those are the those are the stereotypes and the thoughts that sometimes we carry and we're very we can be very judging so yeah. that yeah. whole that whole thing was just like oh wow yeah their experience yeah <laughs> oh my god well i mean we could go on and on but let's um you've answered that question about fidelity yes okay we've answered that so what advice will both of you give to someone who wants to improve the way they show up in their marriage Came back to our original question mm. what is like married to me what i think advice? i think I, I think um we've touched on it in different ways okay so how sorry what's the question again what, what advice would you give, give someone who wants to improve the way, the way they show up in their marriage well i guess it's it starts with recognizing where you're at and being honest about that mm you are god with you and god um i'm assuming you're you know, some, sorry to interrupt you something just occurred to me so for example if the way you speak to your husband yeah right if he said once or twice that i don't like the way you speak to mm -hmm. me so maybe we should switch as in the if you're the person think would i like it if yeah. someone speaks to me that way yeah and a lot of these things like we said we hold up a mirror to ourselves yeah, yeah. um it, you know particularly as we go through this group but as I, i'm learning I've, you know throughout the years and i'm learning it every time i'm not there completely but you know i hold up the mirror to myself but i tell you not um sometimes my husband is my mirror mm, yeah as hard as it is to hear mm. he he can tell me how he feels. So no matter how I hold that mirror to myself, I can think about how I speak to him and think, mm, I don't see anything wrong with it. He is the one that it lands on. He is the best person he to tell me it. exactly, yeah. to yeah. tell me how he feels yeah. about how I speak to him. Yeah. And I then make a choice because sometimes you hear those and you make a choice. Am I going to um, see? Am I going to get behind his eyes mm -hmm. and see me the way he is? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to stand my ground and argue? And a lot of the decisions, those decisions we make, and it's not always black and white, but more often than not, we make decisions that will either bring us closer to each other as a, as a married couple yeah. Yeah. or draw us apart. Yeah. So if he says, the way you speak to me, I mean, maybe, the, and I, I've, I've had it, yeah, <laughs> um, where I, my husband hates me interrupting him when we're 
having a mm. debate, a boardroom debate. <laughs> Black and white. <laughs> He hates it, and um, and it shows that you're not a good listener. Mm. And I know that another area that I keep having to be intentional about because I'm always too eager. Um, and he's told he doesn't like it, and you know you get to a point where you, I, I started and I, I remember that actually you no. Know, sometimes I I I take a pen and paper and just just some one or two things so that I don't forget. Because I I'm want to talk because I, I I'm scared of forgetting there. But I am I am being dis- to him it's disrespectful, and I, okay. I've got to just accept it. So it's 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 showing up, showing up, up with ready to be honest with yourself yeah. and ready to make those changes when either you recognize it, you know God will God will show us who we are through many avenues whether through herself by talking to us directly, his word uh, on his sermon, and through the man himself that you may not even be happy with at that time, you know, and, and you just have to be willing. I think for me, is that being willing to change, yeah. being willing to, women, most women, myself inclusive, like I said before, come into marriage thinking, yeah, I remember even part of the prayer wife small group. It started, I read the book because I thought I'm going to pray and change him and for God to change him. <laughs> you know, it, it, that was the whole motivation. I was like, ah, this book is going to help me pray, know how to pray so that my husband will change. You read halfway, not even halfway through the first chapter, you start to realize that you are the one yeah, that needs work. to change. Yeah. You are the one that needs to do the work. Let God change, do the changing. You're not God. I'm here to help. Mm-hmm. And God will show me what I need to do for my husband, which will be very different to Morenica's husband <laughs> and what Morenica needs yes, to do. Very husband. unique. Mm-hmm. You know, so we each needs to find that. So for me, it's showing up, being humble, being willing to listen to God, to him, to yourself, to people around you. Mm-hmm. And yeah, having trusted friends, I, I, you know, all my friends that are on this platform value you. Um, where you can have real conversations. Yeah. yeah. Not friendships with our bags and shoes <laughs> and parties. Friendship where you can sit down and people can tell my sister, she's the only sister from my mother, so I can say that there won't be any issues. I can speak to my sister about something that's going on with my marriage. And my sister can say, Oh, okay, okay, I see what you know, because she will empathize. But she will also say, hmm, but tola. <laughs> you know? And you need to be open to that. I also think each um, every couple should have a married mentor. You know, people that you can go to. And also, they both of you should have people that you're accountable to. That's so important mm-hmm. at the beginning. of It's so important. We should have that. Yeah. If you have that, if you have that as a foundation, yeah. then yeah. Yeah, that's great. There are two things that I would add okay. to that. Okay, wait, Mary, guess hang on because i was going to ask you your own question oh okay so maybe you might include it in your response okay. all right mm-hmm. so if you could go back and give your newlywed self one piece of advice what would it be hmm. okay <laughs> more than one piece <laughs> but i think the the thing that um has stuck with me the most and i guess this kind of expands to everything as a wife you have the power to set the temperature in your home. The power is fully within your grasp. And so the question is, what sort of temperature do you want to have? And all the the other things kind of spill out from that because two things that have, have no place in a marriage relationship and can destroy it, pride and fear. Yeah. So, if we are able to have a look, and this, this is where the being introspective comes in, you look at yourself and then you take yourself to God and ask him to help you, mm-hmm. help you to be the wife that he created you to be. Yeah. When Detala was saying about your husband will be your mirror, your children are also your mirror yeah. as yeah. well. Your children will be the ones who will <laughs> point things out to you. But those things are so that we can be 
the, the, the Bible talks about us being transformed into the image of Christ. So there's a journey, there's a process that we have to go through. It's not an instantaneous thing. But if we have that as our perspective, then we have the grace of God to take us through and to lead us, to help us to be those people that he wants us to be. Thank you. One question just came in. And the question is, we perceive the world through our experiences, including our trauma. If you're married to someone who perhaps exhibits insecurity in a particular area, how do you discern or ascertain that they are not just being insecure? I'm not so sure yeah, I understand maybe, the question. I, was just, I think maybe there's a bit missing. Yeah. So we perceive the world through our experiences, including our trauma. If we're married to someone who perhaps exhibits insecurity in a particular area, mm -hmm. how do you discern or ascertain that they're just not being insecure? I don't understand the last bit. Yeah. I think that's why. Yeah, it sounds like there's a bit missing of it. Yeah. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Please, can you send the question um, back with the missing link, please? Anyway, um, so whilst we're waiting for that, at the beginning, for those who came in, who joined late, um, Tetola runs, a, she said it's a group, I call it a ministry, called Wives of Wisdom. And we meet, um, okay, Kem said, see, to find out the why behind behind what the insecurities um yeah we meet every tuesday no sorry <laughs> once a month Last tuesday. um yes talk talk about it um or any so, we meet so, on the last tuesday of every month and we meet via zoom for approximately about an hour mm -hmm. and um our next meeting is next week tuesday i think Tux had put the details in the chat earlier and we are going to be talking about what is it like to make love to me part two? Yeah, you guys should join to find <laughs> out what it's like. <laughs> and it's not, um, it's not just about the act of sex, just, no, just no. the kiss. No, it's not about yes. wondering. It goes, um, way, it goes way beyond that. But I, I think the, the thing is, we're essentially a community of wives who are looking to grow in God. And our tool this year has been working through the book what is it like to be married to me and like this Allah has said the um it's a it's a journey of self evaluation and discovery mm -hmm. and then putting into practice the things that we learn somebody's asking how to join i think this Allah, do you want to say so, how they can join i think the easiest thing to say is um dm wives wisdom so we've got an instagram page so just send us a dm thing again so, please. yeah so yeah talks will put the room wives wives with wisdom um if you send us a dm then we will con connect with you to give you details on on joining the group um yeah yeah it's been a journey it's been a journey and again it's a journey of growth yeah. and it's a journey of um discovery mm -hmm. um really what this being a wife is about um rather than what i thought <laughs> initially and seeing it for me seeing it more as a calling and that really brings me back so every time there's a bit of a going off course direction because self comes in and i'm like ego comes in that almost you know sort of corrects and puts you back in there that, okay this this is what god has called me into and the same way we value a lot of us especially christian women or christian men we value the outside calling you know one big ministry out there whether it's uh, one of the five old ministries or not it's there's a lot of weight and importance put on that far more than your marriage i think for me i i always say that my first calling is being a wife is a ministry so yeah. for me it's the ministry that god has put in my hand and i've realized that just over time not something i knew at the beginning yeah. and that helps me in how i show up um or how i come back when i've gone off <laughs> doing my own thing yeah, yeah. no I, I love it because i think this topic is so important because it will help us to 
realize the impact of our behavior, our mindset, our actions, and the, the impact that it has on our marriage. We, we it's something we need to be introspective, yeah, um, a lot. So I, I wanted to say one quick thing about that. You know, takeaway yeah. advice. I think a lot of times, like we were laughing and joking about it when I said, and it is funny when you think about it. Yeah, I'm going to start this group. I'm going to pray, you know, read this book and pray so that my husband will change. And a lot of women, you find women pray more. We're more intuitive. We are more sensitive. And, you know, we pray for our husband for them to change. And we always start off like that. But I think when we start to move to, we pray for our husband, for God to bless them, yeah. you know, for them and for them to realize everything God expects them to realize in this world. And we will benefit from, from it. So you pray from an unselfish perspective and to add, to, you know, to go on to further say, you then be the change that you want to see. You want, I want my husband to be this, da, 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 da. how am I being? What am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. Am I, am I, Am I portraying those things that I'm expecting to receive? Am mm -hmm. I giving what I want to, mm -hmm. you know, give and you, and you will get it back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good measure, press down and yeah. running over. Yeah. So what am I giving, you know? Uh, um, Perfect example of that is the whole thing around gratitude when we did the gratitude yeah. challenge earlier, yeah. Yeah. earlier in the year. And we've done a Thanksgiving challenge last year and it actually forces you to, pay attention to to see what you are grateful for in yeah. the course of that day yeah. and with the thanksgiving challenge i don't know if you remember because forget yeah. you had to write it down yeah and then give give it to our husbands at the end of the 30, 30 days, days. Yeah. and it, it his response was it was just like mm -hmm. he just couldn't understand how i'd spent 30 days doing this and he'd read it and then he'd be like oh wow because there are things that he didn't even remember mm, that yeah. he'd done yeah. but what it did and it was really interesting was that it made him more aware and to a certain extent even seemed to make him want to do even do more, more. Yeah. Yeah. and it's yeah. it's, they're not like big things or or anything like that and it just made me it, it made me more appreciative because it was really funny when we were chatting in the group that you knew that even if he had annoyed you that day, you still had to look for something to be grateful for. <laughs> so you had to be paying attention during the course of the day to say, okay, this is what I'm grateful for today. Yeah. This is what I'm going to say thank you for today. And just having that heart of gratitude and just being just being grateful for just even being able to share this journey of life together. It yeah. really actually does do a lot to change, change your perspective and change your mindset. Yeah, yeah. So ladies, it's a group you need to join. Why should we miss them? Please do that. Just join. Um, the lady came back. She said that question. Sorry, my question was in relation to your wife or husband being your mirror. So basically, how do you trust the feedback of your spouse, okay. given that they may be perceiving your actions through their own insecurities? Oh, I okay. think I see. I I think I understand where that. So you are thinking that what they're saying is because they're insecure. Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay. Um. Hmm, is there a straightforward answer to this? I I I would say I would say whatever it is they're saying. Yeah, we all have insecurities. So my husband may be doing, or I may be seeing something in my husband. Say, I mean, I don't know. Um, my husband likes to after work go go away when he's, he works from home most of the time and he'll go upstairs and stay upstairs just for a day just to reset his brain now i may be secure about being left alone or feeling or interpreting that in a very different way maybe growing up maybe boyfriends left me or i don't know and be pointing out some that to him as from my own insecurity that oh when you go up i think the two things two sides to this you you still listen i would say still listen it may be from a place of insecurity that's fine but i think there's a place for still taking into consideration what is being said and, okay. and understanding the why is being said so i'm flipping it if if i i go to my husband and i say that sort of thing to him first of all there's a check that needs to happen with him that 
okay, I am living, I am living work, I am isolating myself. How much am I isolating myself? Is there an adjustment that I need to make? Even though he may know and he would know that maybe I've had relationships in the past where I've felt abandoned and it's coming from them. Mm. I th- I believe there's still room mm. to take that piece of information and examine it and analyze it. Okay. Um, but also so there's there's the appreciating and understanding that okay there are some insecurities in there you know from my perspective knowing that okay that this is where we, we talk about knowing yourself that why am i why is that issue with me with him going up why am i feeling like this what does that mean for me why what is the why behind those insecurities and i think in marriage we did touch i mean we talked about it, but we didn't name it we talk about emotional intimacy yeah. a lot. And it is that growing to a place where you know, you actually understand and you know each other's insecurities, you know your fears, yeah. you, you, are, yeah. you, you are aware of what scares each other mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. when things like this come up, it actually is then taken with that under- in the context of that understanding yeah. rather than in isolation. It's, it's not an easy question to answer straightforward, <laughs> but I think, I think it's just looking at the whole context and understanding that, um, yeah, that maybe, you know, even in a whole pot of lies, there may be some yeah. truth. <laughs> and until we look for it, we will just throw everything away. Great. Thank you for answering that question. And I'm sure if you guys have more questions that you like them to answer, uh, Moranike or Detola, if you send a DM to Wives with Wisdom, they will answer it offline. Or you can reach out to them. If you're having challenges um, in your marriage or whatever, please reach out to them and know they will answer the questions. And so we want to say thank you to Morenike. Thank you, Daytona. It's been great mm-hmm. having you guys on board. Mm-hmm. And I know that this is not going to be the end <laughs> because there's still loads of questions that we could have um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, those of directions we could yes <laughs> yes um well really thank you i appreciate both of you um god bless you thank you and may the Lord. Okay for inviting us thank you and god will continue to enlarge your tents and strengthen you and put, give you more grace for the work ahead there's a lot of work ahead <laughs> yeah Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Thank you. for the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Hangout community. Thank you, family. <laughs> oh, and before I go, sorry for those who are again the joined late Hangout Cafe Retreat, twenty seventh or twenty seventh to twenty ninth of September. Thank you. See you all. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks, Kemi. See you. Bye. <laughs>